Coming up, why the Biden administration is sending 1,500 troops to the southern border. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. In just more than a week, a pandemic-era immigration policy expires, giving migrants a greater chance at being allowed into the United States. Customs and Border Protection is getting a boost from the Pentagon as it prepares for a significant increase in asylum seekers. CBS's Nicole D'Antonio has more. The Biden administration is preparing for a surge at the southern border, sending 1,500 troops to help Customs and Border Protection. These personnel will be performing administrative tasks like data entry and warehouse support. They will not be performing law enforcement functions or interacting with immigrants or migrants. Next week, the Trump era immigration policy known as Title 42 is set to expire. That will end the ability to use the pandemic as a reason to deny entry into the U.S. The Pentagon says the soldiers will be deployed for 90 days, adding to the already 2,500 National Guard members at the border. These troops arrive as early as uh, May 10th. The administration is preparing for as many as 10,000 migrants to cross at the border next week, almost doubling the daily average from March. Title 42 might as well already have been lifted. And this Texas is, this Republican is Tony Gonzalez represents El Paso, which has seen a 130 percent spike in arrivals at the border. The administration needs to be sending uh, judges to the border, and these judges need to get these asylum cases heard in days, not years. Congress has struggled to tackle immigration reform, even though both sides agree there's a crisis. The current situation is intolerable. There need to be more resources. Hundreds of migrants are waiting just a few feet from the U.S., hoping to seek asylum. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Washington. The White House says judges and lawyers are heading to the border to handle expedited removal proceedings, and those who do not qualify for asylum will be removed in a matter of days or weeks. Now to a developing story in Texas where police say they caught a man suspected of killing five of his neighbors. 38-year-old Francisco Orpiza was arrested after a four-day manhunt. The shootings happened in the town of Cleveland, Texas. It began late Friday after neighbors confronted Orpiza about firing a gun in his yard late at night. All the victims were from Honduras. One of the victims was nine years old. Officials say the alleged shooter is a Mexican national who's been deported four times. Well, normally we talk about the weather. We talk about what's happening you know, above us. But tonight, uh, we're going to talk about what's happening below ground, specifically 12 miles below ground. The USGS, the U.S. Geological Survey, detecting a 2.6 magnitude earthquake with a depth of, again, about 12 miles. This was about... 3.1 to the uh, 3.1 miles to the southwest of Cumberland there in Harlan County. Now, the good news is that so far it doesn't appear that it, we've gotten two reports that anybody's felt it into the USGS there. So these kind of earthquakes, not uncommon, but uh, they generally don't do damage. Now let's go well above 12 miles below the surface and into the atmosphere. We were gusty today, 30 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts out there. We continue to see those gusting 20 to 25 in certain spots, but most of us calming down. Temperatures staying in the low to mid 50s outside right now, and we'll continue to see just a couple of showers trying to work in parts of Pulaski County down the 75 corridor as well. Everything in motion, you see it's all moving to the south and east. Some light showers not out of the question tonight. Your forecast first as we head through the next 12 hours, dropping those temperatures into the 40s before we get right back up into the 50s. Steve, I'll have the very latest on when we see a return to May-like temperatures in a few minutes. All right, Evan, thank you. Another positive update to share tonight about Louisville Metro Police Officer Nicholas Wilt. He was critically injured in the old National Bank shooting in Louisville last month. Police say he is breathing on his own and his heart is beating on his own. They say he is still battling pneumonia, but it is more manageable. He's being transported back to U of L Hospital. Wilt is still in critical but stable condition. One horse has died and another was euthanized today at Churchill Downs in Louisville following today's races. 
Take Charge Brianna, a three-year-old filly trained by D. Wayne Lucas and owned by Willis Horton Racing, fell during race five. She was euthanized on the track. In race eight, five-year-old gelding chasing Artie, trained by Safi A. Joseph Jr. and owned by Ramsey Stables, collapsed and died following the race. The two deaths come days after derby contender Wild on Ice was euthanized in Lexington following a morning workout at Churchill Downs last week. Well, there are just three days now until the fastest two minutes in sports with the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. As Chad Hedrick explains, one local sportscaster and Floyd County native is preparing to show the world how special the day is for Kentucky. The famous call to post that is music to any horse racing fans ears. When you look up there and you see those twin spires, you go, hey. I'm at the Derby. The sight sounds and excitement that culminate in thousands of people descending into the bluegrass state. It's an exciting time to be a Kentuckian as the Kentucky Derby is just around the first turn. Yeah, I found out not everybody in the state loves horse racing, but they watch the Kentucky Derby because it is different. It's um, a bucket list for most people and you're never going to see anything like this. You're never going to see 160,000 people again at a horse race. Kenny Rice has covered a few Kentucky Derbies. I think I've covered 42. I think that's right. I was very young, very small child. But each one is just as exciting as the year before. And it's fun to still see a lot of the people. I mean, there's people like Todd Pletcher still around. I remember a young Todd Pletcher coming up. I remember a young Brad Cox coming up. You know, they're the two stars of this year's Derby. Rice believes there has been a resurgence in the popularity of horse racing, especially the unique pride in Kentucky, thinking the pandemic might have had something to do with it. I think after everybody was so locked down for so long that they wanted to get back and horse racing was the only two sports really out there were MMA. Think of this, MMA and horse racing were the two sports that went on during the whole COVID shutdown. And as the horses are lined up into the starting gate Saturday, millions will be tuned in at home to see the excitement that is the Kentucky Derby. Chad Hedrick, WKYT. Now there are also plenty of events in Louisville all week leading up to the Derby, including the great steamboat race tomorrow on the Ohio River. And of course, the Kentucky Oaks and Derby Eve parties on Friday. Mountain Comprehensive Care Center will be receiving $250,000 in grant money for the fight against the opioid epidemic. The center is one of several to receive its share of the more than $8 million given by Attorney General Daniel Cameron's office. Clinical Director Michael Fannin says they will use the money to help create more programs for the center. And one of the, the main benefits of the program and the money that we're going to be receiving from these uh, settlements is going to be helping them connect with transitional living programs that help them connect with um, job employment and job retention, help them, you know, reacclimate into into the community. To learn more about this, you can find this story on our website at WYMT.com. For many students, standardized testing can cause some anxiety, and with Kentucky state testing taking place soon, educators are working to help students overcome any fears they might have. For students who were impacted by the flood last year, test anxiety can amplify some of the issues they are already facing. That's why caregivers should in ensure these students are well rested, that they have eaten well, and that you encourage them to do their best. If students have issues or if if it's just a normal class exam, we have some that's had some issues. So if we need to pull them uh, to give them a, a smaller, different setting, we can do that. Uh, we want to put them in the position that they're successful. If students are experiencing anxiety during a test, school-based counselor Carrie Lawson says they can try deep breathing exercises to work through the stress. The Kentucky Office of Highway Safety released statistics today showing there were 1,575 crashes involving motorcycles in Kentucky last year, which means there are more than four motorcycle-related crashes every day of the year, which resulted in 99 motorcycle-related deaths. Todd Delf with Backwoods Vipers and Hazard says it's important to always check your bike before going on a ride. 
Check your air pressure. Try to get around 38 to 40 in the front and 40 in the back. Keep that always checked. Check for oil leaks. Check, make sure your signal lights are working so that other people can see you and they know what you're doing. Delf also says it's important to ride with a group if possible, wear the appropriate clothing, and make sure your helmet is Department of Transportation or DOT approved. We are just two weeks away from Election Day in Kentucky, and you only have until midnight tonight to apply online for an absentee ballot. Now, no excuse early voting will also be available next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, May 11th, 12th, and 13th. You can check with your county clerk's office or website for early voting locations. Election Day itself is Tuesday, May 16th. Around 150 women gathered in Paintsville today to celebrate women-led businesses and entrepreneurs. The Kentucky Small Business Development Center hosted the 24th Big Sandy Women's Business Symposium. The event featured keynote speakers and breakout sessions aimed at providing entrepreneurs new opportunities for growth. One small business owner told us she comes every year. This is an event that we do every year and we look so forward to it because we meet so many beautiful women from our communities that surround us and then also all the way into Mount Sterling and Lexington, Hazard and Ashland. So it's great exposure for us, but in addition to that, it's just meeting the people and just spending the day with ladies. East Kentucky Small Business Development Center Director Michelle Spriggs added that this was also an opportunity for small businesses and entrepreneurs to grow together. There's a new way to apply to be a Kentucky State Trooper. There's a new online portal at joinksp.ky.gov. KSB is currently accepting applications for Cadet Class 104, which is set to begin in January of next year. Applications are due by the close of business on August 31st. Delivery delays and long lines at the post office. I'll tell you about the rural communities that say postal problems are holding up checks, bills, and even medications. And we're not done with a chance for showers. I've got the very latest coming up after this. Blake Freeman with the law office of Freeman Childers and Howard. We get lots of calls from people with questions after they've been in an accident. Questions like,